Yo, what is going on guys? Horcrux here and welcome back to the channel. So I have a very special video for you guys today. This is the Emperor Palpatine Heavy Attack Build 2.0. Now I went through and min max this build completely from the ground up. I went back and reformed my old sets, brought this into BG's. Well, what I have for you guys today is an absolute monstrous heavy attack build. I am honestly, it's been really fun. I thought I was not going to enjoy this. But it's actually pretty effective so some of the clips you saw at the beginning of the video my elo is really really high this is on my magic of drag knight so as you guys can imagine i'm against the sweatiest of the sweats i'm still able to just zap everyone down now i do have two different builds for this video so the first video for the first build is going to be the up close brawleristic type of build this is how you're going to get the most damage you can ever get out of a heavy attack build on the magic of dragon knight and then the second build is more of a sniperistic type of build. So the first one's really going to shine when you are running with someone you know, if you are a pre-made, if you have a dedicated healer. If you do not have a dedicated healer or an organized members on your team, the first build is not going to work out too well for you. Now, I did do most of clips on this build because I'm a masochist and I enjoy putting myself through misery. But if you want the easier route to go, the second build is definitely going to be for you. You don't really have to have any coordination. You just sit in the back and you zap people for 6 and 7k heavy attacks every half second. So, let's get into the very first build, fellas. So, take a look at the character sheet. We are Breton for this. Um, Breton is definitely not the best in slot for this one. You will want a high elf, ideally, running the Buick Sugar Skulls. Now, on the Mundus, you can either run Lover or Shadow. It's entirely up to you. Now, it is a very high crit build as well so there is a justification for running shadow if you want bigger crits but if you want more overall consistent damage you definitely want to go with the lover so the character sheet you don't have to worry about completely if you guys are familiar with any heavy attack builds you know the character sheet does not mean jack squat so let's take a look at some of the sets we are running we'll swap over to build number one that i have already preloaded here so let's go ahead and equip the build fellas so this is build numero uno all right so the very first set that we are running is the maelstrom's perfected lightning staff on the front bar sharpened with a weapon damage glyph on this you do not have to have the perfected version the perfected version does give you a little bit more offensive penetration but this is for one of our skills our wall ability when we put it down each one of our lightning staff ticks is going to tick for an additional amount of damage yes this is a lightning staff or is the second build is going to be as well now when it comes to the creme de la creme what sets we're running so there's two sets that kind of function very similar there's three sets that kind of do the same thing well technically four sets because one of them's a trial set but these are really easy to attain you don't need any dlc you can just do the base game so the very first set is undaunted unweaver essentially you get max magic and magic a crit and um, this is on our back bar our back bar only okay so when you use an ability that costs stamina we're going to be using trap beast for this build essentially what it does is it increase it gives you a, a buff that occurs on your little dude down here so i'm gonna go ahead and buff you see my little bar down there you have 10 seconds of your light and heavy attacks doing additional damage so when you when we go in for our burst combo i'll explain that later you want to throw down trap beast and then swap to your front bar so this is the very first set we are using the second set we're using, again, this is up in your face and personal is Noble Duelist. This is Light Armor. The reason I'm choosing this over Undaunted Infiltrator, which we will be covering in the second build, is because it is Light Armor. It's going to give you more spell pin. It's going to give you more crit. It's going to give you more roll dodge. And the stat pieces are better as well. So your heavy attacks from your Lightning Staff are based off of your spell weapon damage and also your maximum magicka this is why i prefer this over an undaunted infiltrator because undaunted infiltrator only gives you stamina for the two and three piece i believe it's either two or three or three and four piece whereas this gives you spell damage for both of those so this is very similar to uh i've already forgot <laughs> undaunted unweaver and uh, it actually gives you more attack damage for your light and heavy attacks now the only snafu to this is you have to be within melee range. So what does melee range mean? So take a look at my guy right here. This technically is not melee range. You have to be really, really close. So we start attacking right here. You notice, <coughs> excuse me, that we have the buff here on our screen. So we, if we kind of take a look and see exactly how far this is, we can scoot back just a little bit more. I think this is the, the distance. Oh, we almost logged out there, guys. It would not have been good. So this is about the distance 
you have to be from your opponent in order to get the damage from this so as you can imagine you do not want to be running this solo okay i did it again just because i'm a masochist but this is how you get the most damage on your build now you have to kind of combat being able to be up in someone's face so uh, on the traits you will want divines in pen well fitted it really doesn't matter if you want to go a super heavy crit build you want to go all divines with a shadow it really doesn't matter what the traits are impenetrable is just fine you don't want sturdy obviously or invigorating or training or none of that garbage but uh we'll hop in over to the jewelry um we're not running a mythic eye well we are running mythic eye it's actually on our head we're running Nova duelist and uh, all the jewelry is arcane, all spell damage, you don't need any recovery whatsoever because you're constantly heavy attacking, gaining resources back. Now, you do have to tank up a little bit. You can go all in if you really trust your healer and you trust the people you're running with. You do not have to tank up so you can get away with running whatever damaging monster Sith that you want. But me, since I run solo on this build, I had to run Gaze of Sithis to tank myself up a little bit as well as Swarm Mothers for a little bit more of a stat increase. So we have about 30k maximum health, which is about what you want to be at when you go into BGs anyway. Ideally, around 31k and then when you go into BGs it's like 29.5k. But yeah, it's it's okay. We are running 5 light, 1 meat, and 1 heavy on this build as well. We have tri stats and all the big pieces. So this covers the gear. So your basic rotation, what I found works absolute best for this build. Um, let's go ahead and go over the skills and then I'll kind of go over the rotation. It did take me about an hour, hour and a half to really fine tune the way this build needs to function in order for you to get your combo off up close. So we're running inner light. This is give us crit on the front bar and this is also to bolster our max and magicka. Like I said before, your damage with your light and heavy attacks is based off of your spell damage and also your max and magicka. So we are running a, a CC, we are running Fossilized. So Fossilized can help you proc the off-balance stats effect. This also keeps people rooted in your blockade of storms. We're going with this one because it lasts longer and the radius is much, much bigger. Also running Choking Talons over the other talents. So this one applies minor main, plus it roots them in place. So any control you can have to keep people held in place, the better. And then we have Structured Entropy. This is only here to proc our empowering passive from our mage's skill line so the way it works is you're going to toss down your uh, barb trap we'll go over the back bar essentially you're going to entropy into your heavy attack and that's how you're going to get all your damage so the full combo is having your le down heavy attacks so all these are creating for 24 25k ish um it can go up you know so um skills on the front bar again I'm running leap because we are running um, up in people's faces. This actually does hit really, really hard. I've hit people for over 10k leaps in battlegrounds. Again, my elo is pretty high, so you know people are pretty tanky. This is just to finish off those really elusive kills, and you can also set up a pretty nice burst combo with this as well. Now, back bar running molten armaments. This is why this is so good on the magic of Dragonite because it buffs your heavy attacks by 50%. So when you're channeling your lightning staff, each single tick counts as a heavy attack. So it does 50% more damage. Now we have our self heal coagulating blood on the back bar. We have cauterize. This is for crit on the back bar plus a little bit of ongoing healing. We have volatile armor. You can run the other armor if you want, but I typically use this to pull a night blades out of stealth. And then we have barb trap. So barb trap is used to proc undaunted infiltrator on our back bar. Well, excuse me, undaunted unweaver on our back bar. And also when it activates, it gives you minor force, further increasing your critical damage by 10%. And then we're also running corrosive armor when you get zerg down you need a gal gel free card and you can actually delete people very very easily when you pop corrosive armor and you're able to line up your combo now the beauty about this you want to kind of play this like a dragonite so the way i like to do this i like to toss down my trap before i go into anything so you have 10 seconds of this buff you're right so you got 10 seconds to kind of line up your burst right so after you toss this down i typically like to just toss this wall down anywhere the aoe on this is pretty large right so you want to have obviously this down you want to talons first if you can you want to talons and then entropy what this is going to allow you to do so it doesn't matter if entropy hits or not it's going to give you the buff regardless your uh, empowering buff so they're immediately going to roll dodge okay Every, everyone's instinct is going to be roll dodge you're going to talent entropy they're going to roll dodge you're going to be zapping them as soon as you finish your heavy attack what you want to do you want to fossilize them 
Entropy, and then Heavy Attack again. That's going to allow you to get two full burst combos off. Now, you may not always be able to keep them in your Lightning Storm. That's okay. This is just there. Hey, if they choose to stand in, they're really going to get screwed over. So again, the combo is going to be Toss Your Barb Trap. You obviously have your Lightning Form down. You want the Talons, Entropy, Heavy Attack, right? Then you want to Fossilize, Entropy, Heavy Attack again. And you just saw my Buff Timer timed out right as the 10 second mark fell off so if you do all this correctly you'll be able to get two complete full heavy attacks off on the same person now if you're in a group or whatever yeah yada yada just be sure before you start channeling your heavy attacks you always apply entropy beforehand to get your empowering buff now this is a battlegrounds oriented build but if you wanted to take this in open world into a group if you want to do something really trolly like saw man to where you just go in and you just delete people with your heavy attacks, right? So you're going to want uh, Thaumaturge, Deadly Aim, Fighting Finesse if you're specking into crits. And then I personally run, it should be Duelist Rebuff. I don't know where my other point is here. No, actually no, Weapons Expert. So when Weapons Expert increases the damage of your light and heavy attacks by 15%. So um, this is going to be our blue tree. When we go over to our red tree, uh, I'm just tanking up what I can with Balance Vitality, Fortified as well as Relentlessness and Pain's Refuge. All right guys, so here's build number two. Now this build is actually pretty tanky on the back bar. So take a look at our resistances. Uh, this is everything and completely unbuffed. Well, we have one buff now. We are running Magna Incarnate on this. So you technically get up to 30K physical resistance as well as 33K spell resistance on this. I tried to make both of these builds very viable if you want to run this by yourself. I don't want to run a super glass cannon-esque type of building you're just gonna get mauled over i want something that can kind of hold its own now this is made to be played at range so if you do not have a dedicated healer or a group member to run with you know that you can reliably trust this is going to be the build for you so it doesn't do as much damage just because we are not utilizing the maelstrom perfected lightning staff along with the blockade of lightning so you're missing out on that amount of heavy attack damage and plus we are running Indaunted Infiltrator on the front bar here. So the downsides of running this on our front bar is that the three and four, well, excuse me, the two and three piece bonuses give you stamina, which doesn't actually help your heavy attack damage. Unlike Undaunted on Weaver and Noble Duelist, which both have spell damage and max and magicka. So you are losing a little bit of damage from here, as well as again, not being able to have your perfected lightning storm prop from your blockade of storms or whatever it's called so you're missing out on that damage so it's not the end of the world but this is much much more consistent the burst combo is very very easy the only thing you have to do literally is just toss down your barb trap tap entropy and zap zap that's literally all you have to do you don't have to have any minimum distance away to cause damage so this is much much more consistent than the previous one so, but it doesn't do as much damage, it's not as fun, in my opinion. So let's go over uh, the sets, just how I have everything set up. Apologies, I am running an Ice Staff of the Undaunted on Weaver on the other build, the first build. I forgot to mention it is defending on the back bar as well. I'm running an Ice Staff, and I know you guys are going to point out in the comments, Oh, Horcrux, whoa, well, what about Try Focus? It's actually eating into your Magicka when you block. Oh no, why would you ever do that? Well, guys, you have 100% Magicka pretty much the entire time. So it's actually in your benefit from when you do block on occasion for it to come from your Max and Magic pool, just so you have more stamina to play around with. So running an Ice Staff actually works in your favor. Yes, I know I'm running Sithis, but just because you're running Sithis on the build does not mean you do not have to block. You do have to block incoming CCs, right? So. Uh, that'll help offset that a little bit but went off on a little bit of a tangent there sorry i didn't cover that now when it comes to enchantments i typically run poisons on this building on the back bar to be honest so um this one should be a weapon damage enchantment i don't know what i'm doing i just <laughs> i left it as a stamina enchantment i'm actually an idiot i did not notice it until just now but you want a weapon damage enchantment on this as well sharpen on the back bar again we're running undaunted infiltrator the only thing that's changed is that we're also running one piece training uh, the chest piece, this is a name training item, it, it comes in heavy, so we're running this on the heavy, reinforced. We're running Magna Incarnate, this is to um, buff our spell damage as well as our resistances, because we are kind of tinky on this, I'm, I'm not going to lie. So this will help give us damage. Now you don't necessarily have to run Magna Incarnate as your monster set, 
if you want to run the uh, the little troll thing that goes around Breeze Fire, what's it called? The the Daedra of Breeze Fire. Um, that one works out pretty good too. It's really trolly. It's untargetable and it does do a decent amount of damage if you want to run that. And then um, we change. We just got to kind of move everything around. You know, just whatever pieces you gotta have. It's not the end of the world, right? We do have Impin on most of the pieces just to tank us up. Well fit is a really good trait as well. Try stats on all the big pieces as usual. And then our other mythic item we're running is Marking Ring of Majesty. This does bolster our offenses as well as our defenses. Again, we're pretty tanky on this. Now, if you had Death Dealer's Fate, you could run that as well. Um, other mythic items you could possibly run. I mean, technically you could run Malakanth, but I think once you see the crits roll off and you're critting people for six and seven K. Now on the other build, I'm hitting people for nine, 10 K crits on occasion. So especially those squishy night blades, oh, you light them up. It feels so good. But yeah, on this build, you can probably expect an average between four to 5.5 K um, ticks from your lightning staff on the upwards of seven K. Now um, on the other build, you can expect around six to seven on average kind of ticks once everything's fully procced and then on the upper end you can expect anywhere anyway from eight eight point five to like nine point five k crits on occasion i have gotten 10 k crits but those are on some really squishy night blades so that's the setup for this one again all spell damage i do have this one as bloodthirsty um bloodthirsty and um uh, arcane it, it's kind of the same just bloodthirsty is just fine don't waste your transmute stones trying to retransmute this you're not going to notice any difference whatsoever now what did change are the skills on the front bar since this is more of a range class you a range type of setup you need range spells as well so inner light is still the same we have volcanic rune so you can set up a really interesting combo with this if you're expecting people to jump on you um it's really good to line up your combo like this you can do the exact same thing to the first build if you want to i just prefer fossilize on the build so you can toss down your trap like as per usual you can line attack now if you expect people is going to come in for your burst toss a rune on yourself so when you enter being you start heavy attacking right if they jump on you they jump into this room you are going to get an entirely free heavy lightning heavy attack off and that's going to bring anyone down to half health and so they're going to immediately have to go on the defensive if you're able to get a leap off you want to pop corrosive armor you're going to be able to get another couple of rotations of your lightning staff heavy attacks off and you're just going to zap them into oblivion okay it's it's really really fun man like th this combo is so easy you just gotta make sure your traps down you just entropy heavy attack that's literally all you have to do and you're going to do a buttload amount of damage so uh, going on to choking talents again this is just when people jump on you also inflicts in the minor main to kind of give you some space bring entropy and then we're also running elemental susceptibility since we have infinite sustain on this pretty much you want to run the other morph this inflicts people with different stats effects that every time it ticks so uh, and plus it stays on them for freaking ever and then for your ultimate you actually want meteor because this is actually a range build you can run leap if you want or standard for more of a group play but typically i play this build at range when you don't have a person grouped up with you in a pre-made healing you yada yada this is just kind of you can sit in the back and just zap people you know like improve palpatine and the back bar is exactly the same feel free to change this around a little bit we do have access to minor force you don't necessarily have to have the sigic order skill line if you did want to put the sigic order skill line on this and spec into crit um, you can take out elemental susceptibility and put on channel acceleration so um that's entirely up to you um champion points still gonna be the same right so yeah this is been two different renditions of the same build now I'm just kind of recap the very first build I showed you guys is more up in your face and personal you definitely need someone who's a really good teammate for you to run that build effectively pros and cons to that build is that it does a lot more damage probably 20% more damage but you do have to be up in front of their face and so you may take a lot of pressure at times when you're just not ready for it so that's downside to uh, build number one build number two it does do less damage again probably like 20% or 15% ish less damage you are pretty tanky as well and you can just zap people from you, you don't have to get your hands dirty you can just zap zap and be done with it um you guys saw in the beginning i <laughs> i dual pan the axe and packed him up on the build it's pretty funny i don't think he was ready for the uh the heavy attack build but i will tell you guys um of all the bgs i've been in it's been kind of hit or miss not gonna lie to whether i got absolutely crapped on or i completely popped off 
some matches I was able to hit 4 million damage, some matches I was uh, only able to hit like 1.1 mil. Um, it just really depends on who you're, who you're up against. But if you have a dedicated healer, this build really, really pops off. If they can't kill you and you're zapping the entire AoE group, ball group is jumping on you. It's just phenomenal. Like, this has actually been a really fun build. Um, the grinding, it's not too bad. Uh, the dungeons are really easy. You can solo grind this if you want to. I suggest a running heavy attack build. And this also works really good for PvE as well, come to find out. I'm hitting like 50k tick crits in PvE running this exact same build. And I was able to literally use my PvP build for PvE and vice versa. So, um, it does have play. I mean, if, you want, if you're casual, just wanting to do veteran content, you can run uh, the first build as well as run it in BGs. And so it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun making this and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it. This has been Horcrux. Please guys, don't forget to like and sub and a huge shout out to my patrons and my community members. Sorry for not mentioning you all at the beginning of the video, but better late than never. So thank you all for watching this video and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.